Ich darf nicht. Okay, we are now being live streamed. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, um, as I said, the last time we met that basically almost the last two years we were consumed with text amendments and other things, but um, there were things on the back burner. Um, and one of them was the 65th Street Corridor. Um, when the last, the last time we discussed it, and I can't remember when, it was quite a while back, um, but there was a feel that we did not want 65th Street to become like 4th Avenue in Park Slope and Sunset Park. There's a need for housing, but we do not want to see that huge development there. So we, we, we at the time, we had a, 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 a fellow who really liked zoning, and he did a study of 65th Street. And as Josephine and I were talking this week, um, the corner of 65th Street and 8th Avenue that is um, proposed to be a family homeless shelter will have to be rezoned. So we'll have to go through a ULA process there. And it's an opportunity to go through the concept of ULA and to just look at that corridor again. So we're, what have you got queued up to start with, Josephine? Yeah, so I just want to just remind, you know, members, we, you know, when we were reviewing a, um, a developer's um, application for the development of, a, of one of the gas stations on 65th Street, we thought it best that we create a vision and recommend a vision to the Department of City Planning in some form. So the fellow did look at it. I'm going to share my screen so we could just go through it really quickly. So here we go, the 65th Street Corridor Vision Plan. And I know many, some of you, I don't think Robert, you were here when Anish was here as a, as a fellow, I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Um, okay. So the 65th Street in Community Board 10 is a 100 foot wide street and a designated truck route. At present, the stretch um, from 6th Avenue to Fort Hamilton Parkway is zoned as an M11, which is primarily for light manufacturing uses. The area surrounding the street has seen, a, has seen a great deal of development projects, as well as demand for zoning text changes. And this report suggests some of the rezoning options for the corridor in line with suggestions gathered in planning the charrette. So this is just a photo of a portion of 65th Street. So this is again highlighting the area um, before 6th Avenue has a different feel to it, uh, preferably should be treated differently than the rest of the corridor. Um, sidewalks are, um, you know, currently being used now pretty much for you know, some of the some of the businesses or auto developments, some of them have changed their retail uses um, in recent years. Um, there was a question about Charette, and that's a small um, a small diagram or photo of snapshot of the area. So access to Leif Erickson Park is difficult from the street. Future residents should have an easier access to the park. Um, this is when he did his walking tour. The sidewalks and fencing along the National Grid site could be better maintained. Um, he did note that cars speed up after Fort Hamilton Parkway signal due to less intermixed traffic. Um, and he highlighted where development is expected along the streetscape. So this is the current zoning map, um, which is again the M1 zone, which has a 1.0 FAR. Community facility is a greater FAR of 2.40 and parking is one per 300 um, square feet. Most commercial uses and certain community users are allowed as of right, residential uses are not permitted. So which is why, again, we think that um, down the road as, as development um, areas are, are few and far between that there are larger lots that you know, are not really being used for manufacturing sites that have the potential for redevelopment. 
Um, so current zoning of R6B with a C24 overlay is just beyond the um, 65th Street corridor going beyond Fort Hamilton Parkway, which the current zoning um, R5B is pretty much attached houses. Josephine? Yes. Could, could, could you give me a reference here? What are the avenues that we're seeing here? Because it's not clear to me. Yeah, this this appears to me. So this is Leif Erickson Park to, okay. to, you know, to the um, left. So Leif Erickson Park you know, travels, um, I would say this looks like to me to be Fort Hamilton Parkway. Okay. So the zoning options that he presented um, to the committee, um, the section of the street before 7th Avenue is zoned for mixed commercial industrial type buildings following the incentive zoning recently proposed for Industry City. The rest of the blocks from 7th Avenue to Fort Hamilton Parkway are zoned um, with C4 zoning types. Um, the zoning would result in buildings of a maximum to six to eight floors, including mandatory inclusionary housing. So just to remind board members, whenever you do a rezoning, um, there is now change to the lower contextual density districts that include a 20% um, affordability. So there's two more stories on average to what we, we had before the, when, when Dyco Heights was rezoned back in 2007, the contextual density districts that we use, mostly the R5B, the R6B, when an area is rezoned, there is now an automatic mandatory inclusionary housing increase of an additional two floors. So you can see here what um, a C42A building looks like um, with an R5B or R6B equivalent. So this is the type of building which is, you know, a large, you know, one story commercial building with housing stories above it. In this case, about, about five stories, which, which would be for the C42A, C43A, 4A or 5A. Um, and this area that he looked at is pretty much 65th Street from 8th Avenue um, to Fort Hamilton Parkway in red. Um, incentive zoning to tool for mixed commercial industrial buildings. Um, and below you see the C4 district. Again, just examples of what can be built um, with a mixed use of commercial on the ground level with corresponding um, residential units above the commercial building. So this is a rendering that shows an eight to nine story um, building, what it would kind of look like on 65th Street. It would be noted that the size of the individual lot um, would determine how much FAR can be utilized, providing building heights and open space requirements such as high density is only possible if each lot has a practical footprint to support an eight story building. So pictures show the C42 way in the Southern tip of community district. So in the bottom left, you could see 86th street. So that area is currently zoned C42A, um, both the left and the right. So you can kind of get a sense of what types of buildings are in a C42A. Remembering that a newly rezoned C42A would would have an added height of about two stories. So zoning option two, the current manufacturing zone is surrounded by residential uses on three sides. Several lots in the M1 zoning are also used for residential purposes. This option proposes designating lots east of 7th Avenue as R5B, resulting in a continuous residential zone along with continuation of commercial overlays on every avenue, for example, C24 and C13 on 8th Avenue. The R6B zone on Fort Hamilton Parkway is also extended to the blocks touching 65th Street. Um, and here he just shows examples of what R6 or R6A look like. They're ex exclusively residential, um, limiting to commercial only on the corners. Here again is R6 and R6B. Um, these are exclusively, again, residential um, buildings that um, 
our contextual districts. And the R6B has an overall base height of 65 feet with a um, floor area ratio of 3.6. Um, required parking is 50% of units, 25% in the transit zone. I believe this is a transit zone or maybe just right, maybe one or two blocks right outside, but certainly 8th Avenue, I believe would be in the transit zone. But I'm not 100%. Um, so places with R6 designation um, to our neighboring districts um, in Sunset Park, 60th Street and 9th Avenue. So he, he focused on this. We haven't used the, the um, contextual, um, we do have R6A and R6B. But these are examples of our neighboring Sunset Park, what, what an R6 designation looks like. Um, his zoning option three that he studied was the zoning option um, in zoning types of all lots from 6th Avenue to 9th Avenue from M1 to a C83, which is higher than any other designation that we have in CB10. So the community facility oh, wow. FAR is increased twofold, which would allow for a much bigger institution like a school. So um, here he shows various auto related services along this portion. So most of the buildings existing are one story. So envisioning what, you know, we'd like to see there, you know, he just, he threw out some options of, of what a C8 would look like um, in this area. So a C8 district, you could see it has a different type of look. It's exclusively um, bridge commercial and manufacturing uses um, because the uses, as you could see, um, you know, are kind of different. You have a furniture company, you have, have some, you know, car repair type of places. So I think his thought was to use a higher commercial um, for this, this portion of 65th Street and examples of what a new CA3 regulation would look like. Um, Bay Ridge Toyota showroom um, at 90th Street and 6th Avenue in Community District 10 has a mix of uses similar to that of 65th Street. And I guess he thought that higher zoning groups would allow for a greater community FAR, allowing for bigger institutions, um, which is considerably larger than, than what we have existing. That, that portion, I believe, is a C, um, a C82, a very small portion of, of board, you know, 10. So he just gave some, um, you know, in here, so just some closer diagrams. We would have to really delve into this of, of what he's proposing here, um, just in terms of visioning. And he gave some different lots, um, different proportions here along 65th Street. Oh, Doris, here it is, a list of current owners and businesses. Oh, okay. Um, along the corridor, I guess he was trying to look to see if there are um, multiple owners here that own um, property. Just to, see, to see if lots could easily be consolidated. And again, yes, yes. Um, so I'll just go through these. We don't have to go through these quickly. I guess this is when we get together and kind of roll up our sleeves. Um, so that was um, that was his presentation um, to the committee. There's a lot to digest in the. Um, in the presentation, I think he has some backup documents. So I, I guess that the committee, um, you know, had some questions at the time. How do we go about kind of getting some input from the community and businesses in the surrounding area, what they would like to see in a vision um, so we can formulate um, our own recommendations to the full board and, and to the Department of City Planning down the road. So um, I see Steve is on the line. And when we did the case for preservation zoning, you know, the whole district was divided into sectors and committee members from the zoning and land use committee actually went out um, and divided, you know, 
uh, you know, there was a list of questions and mapping and, and there were public hearings by individual, you know, section and area to formulate that case to the Department of City Planning at the time. Um, this is a much smaller area. It's 65th Street limited to, you know, um, several avenues. So delving into, um, you know, hitting the streets, reaching out to the perimeter community and, and general public and certainly members of the board, I think um, are likely next steps and how to go about doing that as committee members is, is why we're here tonight to see if we can organize that in some way and, and really delve into the options that were presented and, and see if we could come up with some recommendations. So Doris, I'll turn it back to you. Well, I'm, I'm gonna say reaching out to the immediate community, I think is very important because they are a new, they, they are a, a vibrant and more active, they have becoming more active and we need their input. And my second thought is, um, one of the things the previous administration did was to um, remove hotels as of right in manufacturing districts because we need manufacturing. And we have lost manufacturing. And um, um, the change at Industry City um, is, is really demonstrates that. And I would like to get some information from city planning and the small business administration about the need for what are the manufacturing small manufacturing needs in our city and since this is an m1 zone this is right for small manufacturing and small manufacturing is are usually good sources of startup businesses and um, um, good working collar uh, good paying jobs so they're my comments. All right. And I had forgotten that presentation completely and I forgot how detailed it was. And I really need to, uh, could you send it to all of us and we can review it? Yeah, I think that's a good me. idea. No, ab yeah, absolutely. And even in talking it out, I mean, you know, there are um, certainly changes even from when the report was done. So, so perhaps we can um, do an assessment of what is there and, and, and see if, if this is something that we would like to recommend. I mean, there may be, um, you know, maybe not the need for all of those blocks, maintaining some of the blocks. So I think we have a lot more, you know, a lot more to delve into in, in studying this area for sure. So I will share the, the presentation with um, everyone. If I can ask a question, when um, the zoning changed for Industry City, um, was there anything in the results of that or in that study that um, indicated how it would affect adjacent communities? Because I'm wondering if there was any contingency, whether businesses were leaving industry city because of the, the zoning yeah. rules and changes, or, you know, if, 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 you know, I would love to just see if, if there were, were any, as you say, Doris, any of these light manufacturing companies that weren't in industry city and may have been pushed out, you know, it would just be nice to know if, if there's a need, right? And this could be a good spot in the community for them uh, creating those jobs, as you mentioned. That's an excellent question. And we have no idea, but we will do some outreach and find out. Sorry to give you more work, Josie. No, no, that, that's fine. That's, that's a good question. You know, that really is. I mean, again, the, the reason why the question um, the, the reason why we precipitated, you know, we, we launched the study was because we, we realized that some of these locations were requests for rezonings and, you know, and, and putting together what we would like to see. And again, it doesn't have to be a rezoning. It could just be, you know, a visioning of, of the types of buildings we would like to see or not see. Um, Stephanie, Stephanie has her hand raised. Yes. 
Am I okay? Um, I was wondering if there's a way to find out um, whether or not any of these options um, can be supported by the current infrastructure, and if not, what um, I mean, how do we discover what what can be expanded, or um, you know, in terms of in the past when we've spoken about larger projects, I know that transportation was an issue. Expanding that was difficult, and even sewer or all of the other utility issues. Is there a way to, you know, discover what is viable or what the city would be willing to expand on before we start making suggestions? Yes, definitely. And from what I understand from speaking with some of the agencies is that when there are larger projects or new developments, um, even within the as of right areas and there's not, you know, sufficient infrastructure that it becomes part of that development project. And, and upgrades, but I will get more information on that. That's a great question. That's a question, and, and um, I'm skeptical that they really do include the infrastructure needs when they make those proposals. Barbara. And what community groups would you suggest be included in this? Well, I, I would think that, you know, there are a number of community-based organizations um, in the northern part of the district that are very active. You know, the um, Brooklyn Chinese American Association, there's parent-child relationship that does a lot of just community-based work, not necessarily zoning work. Um, right. There are, you know, just looking at that list, certainly the... Um, the businesses along the corridor, I think, should be included in, you know, any discussion um, or even just visioning. Again, you know, we keep saying it doesn't necessarily have to be rezoning, but it, it could be just a visioning or ideas that we would like to see um, to be prepared because we are certainly going to receive applications um, for redevelopment of a lot of these large parcels of, of land. So, um, you know, knowing what our vision would be for the corridor or some type of framework, I think would be helpful, you know, as we review these down the road in the future. And I, I want to reinforce what Joseph said. We don't need to do a rezoning, but I think some visioning, and we could have several vision, several visions. But, um... Now, a, a, another question here, um, in the M1 zone, um, are school do schools fit into that because you know even thinking about the last conversation from our, our last education and libraries committee when the school construction authority presented on the number of projects but continuously saying that we continue to remain the most overcrowded district you know oh. in New York City district 20 um, do schools fall you know into that and could schools um, uh, open in that area because you know 65th Street down yeah. there are a number of schools right there and you know it, it, would, it would be nice if you know if either if, if schools don't fall into it if the new zoning can include schools that could be another option if you know there is space to develop and, and as challenging as 65th Street is as a corridor um, it is the area where um, we have, we probably have the most need for schools, but I will defer to Josephine on that. Yeah, so the I say the most um, uh, a good example of a school developed in an M1 zone is PS69. It's a, it's, it's a great example of, you know, it was a large um lot that was developed maybe about it must be 10 or 15 years now um and there was great concern zone however the um the the department of education um is exempt you know to normal processes they have a, a, a separate process to develop public schools in an m1 zone so it doesn't come before the community board although we're you know notified of it but schools can be developed in the m1 zone and there were many questions that existed then and now um traffic concerns truck traffic concerns 
you know, nearby industrial uses that can conflict with pedestrian traffic. I would say that the northern part of the district has changed, you know, most significantly in the last decade in that a lot of these larger uses in the M zone have become more retail use based. Um, so, and the schools have been developed there. There have been some restaurants which can operate as of, you know, as of right within the zoning um, M1 district. So we're seeing a, a greater amount of pedestrian traffic um, which has led to calls for street redesigns. For example, right near Pier 69, there was a street redesign request for additional traffic control devices. Um, there was you know, a great deal of um, traf- uh, pedestrian safety um, initiatives led by you know, this board, um, again, near Lee Ferrickson Park, near Pier 69. The 65th Street corridor is a high crash corridor in Board 10. Every intersection within Board 10 along 65th Street from 3rd Avenue right on through Fort Hamilton Parkway um, have significant crash data at each of those intersections. And it's of greater concern when you are now changing that. The, u- the uses are changing currently. We're seeing more and more um, of the buildings being occupied by uses that generate traffic, street traffic. So it definitely is something that we should, you know, look look holistically as, as we, you know, decide on a, a, a visioning plan for the area. That was kind of a long answer to your question, Bob, but. Thank you. I, don't know, I have a pet peeve. I mean, we in Bay Ridge are very, very fortunate. We have lots of parkland and although this corridor is adjacent to Lee Ferretson Park um, our neighboring community is has almost no parkland um, and I, I would I personally would like to see an extension of parkland in that area to serve the community on the north side of 65th Street such as my pet peeve Yeah, I mean, certainly open space is um, in any development project in the streetscape is, I think, um, has always been important to this board. Um, resiliency, you know, um, the capture of stormwater, uh, making sure we have you know, sufficient green spaces throughout the district and maintaining, you know, a streetscape. Is, is true throughout the district, a little bit different on 65th Street because of the current manufacturing use. So, you know, as, you know, as developers may come and look at this area and, and, and develop it, I think that um, it's something Anish had contemplated and looking at also within his um, visioning recommendation was, you know, incorporating, you know, open space or some green space within potentially new development. So, you know, I, I think we could talk a little bit about next steps, how we would like to proceed, Doris. Yes. You know, on, on Good, putting um, together the revisioning plan. I think we should, um, the entire committee should get a copy of the. Did I lose you? I don't think so. Okay. I keep getting the sign across my screen. Your internet connection is weak. Your internet connection is weak. But, uh, can you hear me now? Uh, well, I would say, I guess our next step would be that the full committee gets a copy of the report um, and that we do some outreach about um, the manufacturing, what kind of factory, as Robert mentioned, the manufacturing that was lost in the change in Intercity City, what kind of manufacturing needs there are and um, what kind uh, have we had within our community any demonstrable need for development in that area. 
Anybody else? So we'll, we'll take that as our next step. And we might need some help from city planning here. Because I think we're um, venturing into fairly new territory here. At, uh, but, and I, I think, I guess my concern is what are the needs in our um, local community, in community boards, in our, in, for community board 10 and our neighboring communities for development in that area. And, and any residential development will have some serious issues because so much of it has been used as gas stations and repair stations that there are environmental issues. So it might be easy to do manufacturing than re easy residential. Uh, Doris? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm. I forget how to, I, I'm working off my phone tonight, so I don't even know how to raise my hand, but there's not that many. <laughs> so excuse me. All right. Um, it, ju it just seems to me like, uh, like we're here, we're talking about things here, but we really haven't even come down to the, to the basic conclusion. I mean, do we want to make this a place that's a business place? Do we want to put schools there? Do we want to put, because that's what I'm hearing. I mean, this, and, which makes it a completely different type of a place. And, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, you, and we're talking about parkland and uh, I, I'm just saying like, what is it in very, very general terms that we want there? Because well, we can't, if we say, if we say that we want to keep it kind of like it is a hodgepodge, okay, which is, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I'm not sure that is really a good idea. I, I mean, uh, I, I just, I mean, are we going to put a little bit of this, a little bit of that? Are we going to knock everything down and make it a parkland? I, I mean, I'm not quite sure I, I, I hear any ideas here as to what we're going in an overall uh, uh, um, sense. Well, I don't say, I, and I agree with you completely. We do not have an overall concept. And Anish looked at this very thoroughly, and we never went back to it. And... The reason I think it's important now is because once we have the uh, development at 65th Street and 8th Avenue for the family homeless shelter, there will be renewed interest in that area and we need to be proactive. So we need right. to think. That's all we got to do. We got just got to think. Right. Or is, it, or is it just simply that we say, you know, we think about as a committee and as a board, what we would, you know, what are the parameters of development? Like, do we want to, you know, set what our vision is for what it should look like? And I don't know in what form that could be. Is that just a statement? Is that something that we explore as, as a board? Well, if I can just say, it, it just seems to me that if we get into something right now, that's like a little bit of micromanagement doesn't make a lot of sense until we know, we can't do the micro till we know the macro. Okay, and so I understand that we're going to have a shelter there. Okay, uh, that's coming one way or the other. Does that define the area? Does that mean that we, how, how does that mean we look at the area? Uh, like I'm saying, if, if it's a shelter, do we want park space there because of the shelter? Uh, I, I, I just, I'm saying that, uh, you know, I, I'm just not quite sure that anything that Anish did here, uh, it, you know, it, it was wonderful work. I don't, but I'm oh, saying it just, seems, it just seems to me that we have to come up with something that's far simpler, okay, in right. concept to say we want to go in this direction, okay? And, uh, you know, like for, if we say that we want it to be, a, we'd like to see a change to a C1 district, okay, a commercial district or something of that nature. That's fine. So we say, you know, that's, that's what would be good there. And then we can start working from there as to what we'd like to see in a C1 district because we have a parameter. As it stands right now, I mean, we, we haven't even narrowed it down, uh, you know, like I said, to the, to the macro. Uh, well, I didn't expect us to come up with a decision tonight. No. My idea was to put this on everybody's radar and have the visual of the corridor and um, uh, think about it some more. That's about it. I don't, I, 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 I certainly didn't expect us to come up with the concept of 56th Street tonight. 
but we need to realize that it should be back on our radar. And we should take the report and all the ideas that were brought up tonight and, you know, you know, put it, put, put it on the back burner there and, you know, think about it at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Don't call me. Write down notes at that and we will discuss it more. Can we text you? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but, you know, we had so many other issues going on that we took this one off, you know, we, we, we kind of forgot about it. And I do believe that the development at 65th and 8th will increase interest in the area. So we need to be thinking about it. And we've got a lot of good ideas. And um, all we need are some ideas. And we don't need them tonight. OK. But, but to Steve's point, I mean, I the idea of um, soliciting ideas from the community, I, I would be um, hesitant to suggest anything for this area without knowing what residents would like and what the um, predominant needs are or the pressing needs are. So, I mean, is that part of the next step as well? I know we talked about it, but, you know, first the committee reviews whatever um, Anish's, uh, the presentation that he did. And then what do you see um, as a way to reach out to the community and in what the, what the timeline would be? Well, I would say some, some outreach to the immediate residential community, which is not large, um, and then some outreach to the business communities. And most of that is really north of us. And how far do we extend, Josephine? To about, um, so it's the railroad cut? Between sixty so first and sixty second Street, our border is right right down the middle, um, in between sixty okay. first and sixty second Street. So a few blocks away. So I mean, we we had excellent engagement with the community in that area about the change in direction on traffic on Seventh and Eighth Avenue. So we have um, some contacts there. So once we do some thinking, we should have some contacts there. And, and find out what they think the needs are for that community, for that area. Because okay. they, 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 that's more, they, they are more personally involved, I think, than we are. They're, they're the small business right. owners, not the car dealerships. And, and they could be insightful. Okay. So that's our next step. Think about it. Don't call me or text me in the middle of the night. And, um, emails? <laughs> emails. Sure, you can email. <laughs> that, those, those will wake me up. And talk. <laughs> can we knock on your door? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Good. So in... Um, um, Thinking about 65th Street and the um, 65th and 8th that will be rezoned, it made me think about the ULOC process. And um, so um, we haven't done much ULOC, and Robert, I don't think you've done any ULOC with us. So um, I just sent those segments of the ULOC. ULOC is the only area where community boards are not just advisory. We have to go through a serious process, we have a timeline, and they, they don't, they can't just say, oh, that's a committee board, so done. But we go through a process and they, uh, they're they required to listen to us. So Whether they do or not, it's a different story. But, um, so at some point we will be going through a renewal process for that area, hopefully, and because there are timelines on you, it will come to us very soon so it is not something that we deal with over the summer because it's a 60-day deadline right time frame right Josephine yeah 60 days right so we would we, yeah so 
that there's a time limit as to when it comes to us, how we do out, that we reach out and that we make comments at that. And I have to commend um, the district office. They have done an excellent job of outreach on everything. Um, they they used to painstakingly go door to door and put um, flyers in every mailbox of that, but they now use, um, what is it called, direct door mailing? And they, they pick a targeted area and they send um, uh, an advice to everyone in that area. And that has become a very, very effective tool for outreach, and especially now in Europe at the time. And of course, they have their um, uh, all the people they contact with their newsletter. So, Doris, I don't know if everyone could hear me, but everyone is frozen on my screen. <laughs> Am I frozen? Hello. I could hear you, but you're frozen too. Well, you guys are moving very well. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy about that. <laughs> but uh, can everybody hear? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, at least we can be heard. Okay. okay. So thank you. Um, any, uh, so, so we need to reach out, do, do more outreach about the, the concerns about 65th Street, and we need to do uh, outreach of what, what our neighboring communities think is needed there, um, what city planning and the small business administration thinks is appropriate for the area, and then do some more thinking. And be prepared, be prepared for some potential development there. And um, I would say that's it. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You Thank too. you. Uh, Take care. Uh, just a question. Have, have we all found out if we're back on the community board? When does that happen? Who knows? Uh, it I mean, should happen. Uh, um, that should happen by the end of this month. Oh, OK. OK. We'll find out if it, it happens by the end of this month. <laughs> yes. Well, March going to have to do this anymore. Okay. Thank you all. I made a motion to adjourn. Okay. Good night, all.